Well, Boo Boo, my itty bitty buddy, I told you a Betty Buy type story. So now how's about a little hibernation nap? <sighs> that Jack and the Beanstalk story did make me a little bit sleepy. Maybe if you told me another bedtime story, I could do some serious hibernating. Okay, Boo Boo. Just relax. And your favorite storyteller, name of Yogi Bear, will tell you the story of Little Red Type Riding Hood. Once upon a time, too kind of cliche, in a little old cottage at the edge of a hairy, scary woods, there lived a little girl and her mother. On her birthday, the little girl received a beautiful red riding hood from her grandmother. She liked the hood so much, she wore it all the time, even over her pajamas. So the people in the neighborhood started calling her Little Red Riding Hood. Anywho, whilst Little Red Riding Hood was doing her uh, homework... Do the monster jet. Do the monster jet. The phone rang. The call was from her poor old grandmother. Collect. Hi, Granny Baby. Says Little Red Riding Hood. What's up? Well. Says Grandma. To tell you the truth, I'm not feeling too sharp. You know, I got aches and pains, headaches, a sinus condition, and like that. But otherwise, I feel super. Well, where do you hurt most? Well... I heard all over more than anywhere else. What you need, says Red Riding Hood, is a good hot meal. I'll whip up a few goodies and buzz over to your house. Crazy, says Granny. And with that, she hung up. After all, she was out of the toll-free area. So little Red Riding Hood got out her big cookbook and started mixing up a lot of yummies. Well, when the lunch was all prepared, Red Riding Hood slipped on her sneakers and hopped on her scooter, and away she went for Grandma's house. Being in a big hurry, little Red Riding Hood drove off the freeway and took a shortcut through the woods. But today just wasn't little Red Riding Hood's lucky day. She hadn't gone ten miles when... She heard the sad wail of a motorcycle patrolman bearing down on her. That's odd. I'm only doing 99 miles an hour. All right, Gus Grissom. You trying to get back in orbit? Roars the cycle jockey. But, officer, my name's not Gus Grissom. I'm Little Red Riding Hood. Couldn't you tell by the Red Riding Hood? How do I know that's not just a disguise? And you're a notorious international spy. Let me take a look at your driver's license. <laughs> Why not? My papers are all in order. Hmm, I thought so. You're not really Little Red Riding Hood. That's just a numb de plum. What makes you talk that away? My name's on my driver's license, can't you read? Never mind, can I read? What you got in that basket? Contraband? Stolen crown jewels, plans for an interplanetary bus. Oh, cool it. Says Red. It's just a bunch of lunch I'm taking to my grandmother. Open it up. I don't take any chances. Okay. Says Red. Looky, vanilla matzo balls, borscht, sweet and sour, French fried buttermilk. Mm hmm. Said the lawman. I'd better take all these goodies along with me. What for? As evidence. Evidence of what? I'll think of something, says the motor cop, grabbing at the basket. But Little Red could see that the motor cop wasn't a real motor cop, but some kind of a phony. So she grabbed a basket of goodies and blasted off to the woods, leaving the phony fuzz behind. Wow. My disguise almost worked, but I'll get that little red riding hood yet. Uh, my name ain't the Big Bad Wolf. Is that the end of the story, Yogi? No, Boo Boo. 
I'm just building up to the denouement. The what, Yogi? You know, the climax. You see, the wolf figured he would get to Grandma's house ahead of Red Riding Hood and grab her when she arrived. Soon, the big bad wolf skidded up to the front of Grandma's cottage. He can knock on the door. Okay, okay, so we dingle the chimes. Who's there? Answered Grandma. It's only me, Little Red. I mean, it's only me, little old me, you know, Little Red Riding Hood. I brought you a whole basket full of goodies. Uh, open the door, Granny. Okay. Said Granny. But instead of coming to the door, Granny went out the back door, climbed off on the roof with a bucket of hot water, and dumped it on the wolf. Yeah! That's much. And seeing he'd been out foxed, he went yelping into the woods. Well, by now, the wolf was getting a little fed up with being outsmarted. And just when he was about to give up, he got one of his sneakiest ideas. He dashed downtown to a costume shop where they rent costumes for Halloween and parties and like that. I'd like to rent a Little Red Riding Hood outfit. You see, I'm going to a costume party as Little Red Riding Hood. Well, only minutes later, there was another rap at the door. Uh, the chimes rang. Who's there? Asked Grandma. It's only little old me. Fib the wolf. Little Red Riding Hood. How can I be sure? Asked Granny suspiciously. Just look out the window and see, said the sneaky old wolf, putting on his dark glasses. And when Grandma saw the bright red riding hood, she opened the door and let the wolf in. I'm not one to criticize, Little Red, says Grandma. But I think you ought to get a shave. Shave? Uh-oh, it's not Little Red Riding Hood at all. It's the big bad wolf. <laughs> what a sneak. It takes one to know one. Chuckles the wolf, and with that smart aleck remark, the big bad wolf grabbed Granny and locked her in the closet. Then wearing a shawl and one of Granny's lace nightcaps, the wolf jumped in the bed, dialed in the electric blanket, pulled the covers up to his nose, and waited for Little Red Riding Hood to come along. While he was waiting, the wolf decided to turn on the radio. To the monster chair. To the monster chair. interrupt this program to bring you a special police bulletin. Be on the lookout for a big, shaggy, ugly wolf known to be lurking in the woods near Grandma's house. He's about three feet tall, weight about 90 pounds. When last seen, he was wearing a dirty, mangy old overcoat, and his teeth looked like he'd forgotten the brush after every meal. Suspect is Caucasian and goes by the name of Big Bad Wolf. That is all. And now back to that new musical group called the Cotton Pickin' Guitar Pickers. Well, a wolf had to act fast. The police were closing in on him. But could they find him before he found Little Red Riding Hood? And about that time, the wolf heard a familiar sound. Who should walk up and knock on the front door but Little Red Riding Hood? What's wrong with the chimes, Yogi? All right. That's better. Well, to get back to the plot, Little Red Riding Hood called out. Anybody home? Who is it? Called out the wolf in his granny voice. It's me, you know, Little Red Riding Hood. Well, don't you stand there, child. Come on in. So not knowing what had happened to her grandmother, poor Little Red Riding Hood put the basket down and walked over to the bed to see how her poor granny was getting along. How are you feeling, granny? Oh, fair to middling. I've sort of got the miseries. What I need is a little nourishing food. I've got all kinds of goodies for you, Granny. How about a nice hot bowl of pasta fazool? Well, crazy. Won't you join me for a little tatey tatey? But just as Red Riding Hood started to fix a nice bowl of pasta fazool, she heard a noise. What was that? Oh, that? That's termites. The place is just crawling with termites. And why do you have the shades down, Granny? Oh, that? Uh, well, the 